Hey, this is Dawson from where you can watch, learn, and fly. Welcome to the first episode of Journey to A License. In today's video, we're gonna be going over the gear that you need to skydive. If you're new here, we'd love for you to join the team by subscribing to the channel. And if you enjoy this video, please let us know by smashing that like button. So welcome to Gear Town. Now considering we're gonna be using this to skydive, we need to make sure that it's working properly. All right, so today's episode is all about gear and what you actually need in order to skydive. Now, when you're first starting out, it might seem kind of daunting with all the different bells and whistles that are out there, but don't worry, we're gonna break all that down and explain to you what you need and why you need it when you actually go skydiving. All right, so welcome to the gear counter. What we have here is all of the items that you're actually gonna need in order to skydive. Now, starting from the top, we have helmets. There are different kinds of helmets and we're gonna explain all those differences. Next, we have goggles. Obviously, that's gonna help keep the wind out of your face depending on what kind of helmet you're wearing. The next order of business is audible altimeters. These are small altimeters that you're gonna put inside your helmet and it's gonna beep at different altitudes to let you know how high you are. The next piece is visual altimeters. These are altimeters that you're gonna wear on your wrist and it's gonna tell you how high you are while you're skydiving. Next, very important, is a jumpsuit. Some people opt to wear regular clothes, but when you just start out, it's important that we wear a jumpsuit. It's gonna help us with our flying. And depending on what kind of jumps you're doing, you're also gonna have to wear different kinds of jumpsuits, but we're gonna get into all that later. Next, we have shoes. These are super important. We wanna make sure that we have good support so that we can run, we can jump and do all that fun stuff. And obviously we don't want those flying off while we're skydiving. Then if you're lucky enough to live in a place like Canada where it's nice and cold, you're gonna wanna wear some gloves. Very important, super cold up at altitude, a lot colder than it is on the ground, so something to keep in mind. And obviously, skydiving, you're gonna have to pay for all this stuff. So you gotta make sure that you have your license, your ID, and something to pay for your jumps, cash, credit cards, all that fun stuff. All right, and then of course, the next item on our list is the trusted logbook. This is where we keep track of our entire skydiving progression. We log our jumps, we log what we did, we log the types of plane, the parachute, this is where we keep track of all of our skydiving records. And lastly, the most important piece is obviously the rig. This is the actual parachute that we're gonna wear while we're skydiving, and we're gonna explain all the bells and whistles that go with that. All right, so the first item on our list is helmets. Now, might seem a little counterintuitive to be wearing a helmet when you're skydiving, because you know, in the event that uh, make it down to the ground a little quicker than we want to, helmet's not gonna do much. But that's actually not the reason we're required to wear helmets. The reason for that we're required to wear helmets is because in the event that we make collisions with other people in the sky, we might hit our heads on the plane, or even on landing, we wanna make sure that our head's protected if we have a little less than graceful landing. Now, when it comes to helmets, there are different kinds of helmets. When we first start out, we're most likely gonna be wearing a helmet that looks similar to this. This is an open-faced helmet, and most likely it's gonna have a pocket on the outside for a radio so that you can communicate with your instructor. There, they're gonna help give you instructions uh, so that you can actually land your parachute safely. So the next style of helmet is a full face helmet. The reason it's called that is it because it covers your entire face. These helmets uh, offer a little bit more protection and a little bit more comfort against the wind while you're falling. Uh, and you're also gonna notice probably a little bit quieter as well. A lot of people like to wear this in the tunnel as well as in the sky. Um, so it's a good option if you're doing both sports. And you're gonna notice as well, in these helmets, we're also gonna have a little pocket to put our audibles, which means again, it helps with awareness and it's gonna help keep us in check when we're falling through the sky to know how high our altitudes are. If it's a little bit colder, you might wanna look at something like this as well because it's gonna help take a little bit of that wind burn effect away. And then as we progress into the sport a little bit more, we also have an open face styled helmet, um, but we're gonna have a little bit different features. One of those features includes having a mount for cameras. Uh, we're gonna have a chin strap and these offer a cutaway system, which means that in the event that your camera or your helmet does get entangled with your parachute, you're gonna be able to cut this away and it's gonna be able to come off. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. You'll notice that these Helmets also have a pocket for audible altimeters, which you can see from the outside, makes it a little bit easier to double check what altitudes your audibles are set at. And then of course, goggles, there's different styles. If you're like me and you wear glasses, uh, there are goggles that are made to go over top. I personally prefer to wear contact lenses while I am jumping, a little bit more comfortable, a little bit easier to kind of go about your day. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about fitting all that stuff over top. 
uh, and there we go. So that's the helmet. So the next item on our list is audible altimeters. These small devices are used to beep at preset altitudes. That means it helps maintain your altitude awareness so you know how high you are while you're falling through the sky. Now there's different kinds as you can see here. Some you can manually set on the device itself. Others you might have to plug into an application and then on your computer you actually preset those altitudes and you upload that into your altimeter. Not a big deal, just a difference of the two. Now, as we mentioned earlier, helmets have pockets for your audible altimeters. So basically what that means is inside your helmet, you're gonna have a little pouch and you can slide that audible altimeter inside. Very simple, very easy to use. You take that in there, you slide it in. You can't even tell it's in there, but as you start going up to altitude, you'll hear it beep. And then obviously while you're free falling, it's gonna make a nice loud noise and you'll be able to understand or hear how high you are while you're falling. So very important, helps maintain altitude awareness. You might not be using that at the very beginning of your progression, but it is a good idea to kind of start using these as soon as you can. All right, so the next item on our list is visual altimeters. These will tell you how high you are while you're actually skydiving. Now this is very important for developing altitude awareness because it is very important for us to know how high we are during the free fall and also how high we are underneath canopies. As you can see, there are two different kinds of visual altimeters. We have a digital or electronic altimeter, which shows us our altitude on the screens. And then we also have an analog altimeter, which looks like a clock. Now, analog altimeters, uh, typically it gets a little crowded once you get under a thousand feet, which is why some people will prefer to have a digital altimeter. Regardless of the case, they will both tell you how high you are. Now in the beginning of your progression, it's not that important which one you wear, as long as we're kind of seeing our altitude throughout the jump and the course of our skydive. Both of these are worn a little bit differently, and depending on what style of jump you're doing, you're also gonna have these mounted in different places. For example, a wingsuit will sometimes wear this on their chest strap, people who are doing the crew discipline will also wear these on their chest straps. In our case, we're just gonna show you the basic versions of altimeters that you're gonna be wearing. The first one is has a wrist strap, and you're gonna put this on, and it's gonna be on your forearm. You'll notice that these ones, you can adjust them a little bit more. It's a nice tight wristband, and you're gonna be able to see that and kind of position it wherever you'd like. The analog, on the other hand, is a little bit different. We're actually gonna put these loops over top of our fingers, and then we're gonna wrap that around. The analog is actually gonna be mounted on the back of your hand. So you have the loop that goes over top of your fingers, and then a shot that goes onto the back of your wrist. You can see both cases, when I'm in my nice free fall, basic free fall position, I can look at both of these very comfortably, and I can see them both very clearly. All right, so the next item on our list is clothing and jumpsuits. So first things first, when we get to the job zone, we wanna make sure that we have athletic or comfortable clothing. Skydiving requires us to go to different positions. We're gonna have to move around. We're gonna have to be arching. So we wanna make sure that we wear clothes that allow us to do that. Another thing to consider for clothing is that if you're jumping in colder climates, you might wanna make sure that you have warm base layers. So these are warm long johns and long sleeve shirts that you have that you can put underneath your clothing. It's gonna help keep you warm on the climb to altitude and during free fall. Now, the next thing on our list is the jumpsuits. There are a lot of different kinds of jumpsuits, but we're gonna kind of break this down for you. As a student, you're given a jumpsuit for three primary reasons. First is safety, second is performance, and third is durability. Safety, let's dive into that a little bit. You'll notice on most jumpsuits, we're gonna have a zipper that goes all the way up to our neck. And the reason that they do that is because we don't wanna risk having clothing that comes up and covers our emergency handles. Our emergency handles. The second reason that we have a jumpsuit is for performance. You'll notice that on student jumpsuits, we tend to have a little bit baggier legs. The reason for that is because we wanna have a little bit more lift or a little bit more drag in the places that tend to be a little bit more unstable during free fall. And then the last reason that we have a suit is for durability. 
if we have less than graceful landings, which trust me, in the beginning, it tends to be the case, we're gonna be sliding, landing, moving around, maybe falling on our knees a couple of times. And by having a jumpsuit, we're protecting our clothes underneath. So you're gonna notice that these jumpsuits tend to get dirty pretty quickly. It doesn't matter if you're jumping in sand, doesn't matter if you're jumping in grass, doesn't matter if you're jumping in snow. In either case, these tend to get pretty dirty and it's good to have something over top of your clothes to keep those uh, from getting mangled. Now, as we progress in the sport, we're gonna go into different disciplines and we're gonna do different things in the sky. And that requires sometimes different kinds of jumpsuit. As we mentioned earlier, sometimes people will just jump in regular clothes and that's quite all right. But other times, depending on what discipline we're doing, if we're doing belly formation stuff, we might wanna have a belly formation suit. And you'll notice on these kinds of suits, we actually have these little things that are called booties. This is an extra piece of material that goes straight from your knee all the way to your toe, and they act as rudders on a plane. So it's gonna give your legs a lot more power to help maneuver you. And then you'll notice that on the arms, there's a lot less material here. This means that we can move our arms freely to dock on other people. We can grab other people and move our arms without having all this drag that pushes up against us. Next, we have freestyle suits. These suits tend to be a little bit more form fitting, um, a little bit stretchier material and allow us to move a little bit more freely. You're gonna notice in these, we have a little bit more stretch. Some will use them in the tunnel and in the sky. Some will have different suits for the tunnel. Some will have different suits for the sky. Um, but you'll notice that these are a little bit more form fitting. Uh, they're gonna be a little bit tighter and they're gonna be a little bit more flexible. In either case, when we start wearing jumpsuits, we wanna make sure that we're wearing the same jumpsuit as best we can, because it's gonna help keep our progression consistent. If we're constantly feeling the same thing with the same jumpsuit, it's gonna be a lot easier to learn. Whereas if we start changing from jumpsuits to jumpsuits, or we jump with shorts, and then we jump with baggy jeans, and then we jump with skinny jeans, it's gonna change what we feel while we're flying, and it's gonna make that learning curve a little bit easier. So we wanna think about having a suit, and we wanna use that suit as often and as long as we can in our progression, it just makes things a little bit easier. All right, so sticking with the theme of clothing and jumpsuits, the next item on our list is shoes. Now, when it comes to shoes, we wanna make sure that we have shoes that are nice and tight, offer a little bit of support so that we can run around and we can be jumping. As you know, skydiving, we're gonna be jumping out of planes. So we wanna make sure that we have shoes that are nice and tight, that are comfortable, can be worn all day. And we also wanna make sure that we have a little bit of support. You'll notice here I have two pairs of shoes. I have a pair of running shoes. I personally like to wear Vans because all the cool kids wear Vans. And you'll notice that they're two different colors. That's just so that I can see myself in all the pictures. You'll also notice that on these Vans, I have green laces. These are self-tying laces, which means that they have little clips in the end, which means that I never have to worry about tying my shoes or have them coming undone. Really, really uncomfortable when you're flying through the sky or if you're flying in the wind tunnel and your laces come undone and start hitting your legs, it's very annoying and it doesn't feel very good. It's a quick tip for anybody that's out there that wants to use them. Um, I definitely recommend getting a pair of those laces. We want to avoid wearing sandals or flip-flops because one, they don't have a lot of support, but two, we run the risk of losing them while we're free flowing. So we don't want to have that. We also want to avoid having boots or big heavy shoes because that one is not gonna be conducive to flying in the sky. It's gonna throw us off a little bit. And when we're landing, we don't wanna be running around and all that stuff. So try to think about making sure that you have nice shoes with a little bit of support and it'll do the job. All right, so the next item on our list and arguably the most important is the actual parachute. Now the term that we use to describe this whole thing is called a rig. And a rig is made up of four key components. The first is obviously the harness or back pad. That's what has the leg straps, the shoulder straps, the chest straps. That's the harness and attached to that is the container, which is where we have all the good stuff. Next, we have the main parachute. That's gonna be located in the bottom half of the backpack. And just above that is where we're gonna have the reserve. Just above or behind, it's gonna depend on the model of container that you have you're gonna have what's called the AAD or automatic activation device. And we're gonna get into that stuff later. And that is the ring. Now, the way that this system works is that we have a handle at the bottom and we pull that handle out. That handle is attached to a small pilot chute, which inflates, and that's attached to a bridle. That bridle is this black piece right here, which is gonna pull open the closing loop and it's gonna expose the main parachute. That's gonna pull up the main parachute, which is attached by these risers. And that's how we have a deployment of the main parachute. 
All right, and that's a wrap for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to click the link in the description below to check out the full article. We'll see you guys next time. Blue skies.